Uninterrupted Media in conjunction with Uninterrupted Writings presents LSU Odyssey Oddcast The Oddcast The Oddcast Everybody, everybody has it going. Everybody has it going. How's it doing, everybody, on this Tuesday? I'm doing good. I hope you are. You know, I've been pretty annoyed over the last few days with Coach Ed Orgeron's excuses, lack of uh, taking responsibility. Um, No matter how many times he says it. um, I'm just sick of uh, the stagnation of things at LSU, aren't you? And, but, you know, something that came to my mind today, I really wanted to, to point just a huge target at, is how ridiculous it is for two LSU fans to be going at each other, comparing certain players to certain players. This guy's better than this guy, I swear to God. You don't know, and you're wrong, and blah, 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 blah. And they've all, we all got our stats. We've all got the stat that backs our guy more. And, you know, we want to we wanna post about how right we are, and how wrong the other people were, and how this guy sucks, and how this guy couldn't get it done, and how this guy is so much better, and... That's great and everything, and I understand that these are young men who are, you know, pursuing a a pathway in life where they're going to have to deal with criticism. They're going to have to take criticism, and they've probably already dealt with a lot of criticism from their coaches thus far in their lives. We would hope. On the other token, there's there's definitely some some kids who've, who've seemingly never dealt with the criticism ever. So, you know, and and they probably can't take it as well. So there's a few very interesting uh, things kind of playing off each other right there with that. But um, for me, what I'm seeing here is none other than ridiculous tribalism. And... It's, it's very specific to the Coach Ed Orgeron era. You know, when Joe Burrow came in... Try to remember the name of this quarterback, damn it. I can't remember his name. He was there at LSU for just one season. Everyone thought he was going to be the 2018 starter. And I'm not talking about Miles Brown. I'm talking about someone else. I can't remember this quarterback's name. But when... Coach O said it was going to be a competition. Coach O was lying. Joe Burrow was his guy. And this quarterback could not stand the lie that it was going to be a quarterback competition when he knew that Joe Burrow was going to be winning that job. And so he transferred and left. You know, it's not like we, we, you know, he became this giant monolithic great quarterback somewhere else. I can't even remember the guy's name. But the point is is too many times in the Coach Ed Orgeron era have I seen players played against each other in the media, among the fan base, and it's all set up by comments Ed Orgeron makes in these press conferences. He always ties uh, Ty Davis Price and John Emery Jr. together. Just, be- I really feel like it's almost like he's just rattling names off the top of his head, and so he'll say... 
Ty Davis Price and John Emery Jr. has got to start running the ball. Ty Davis Price, and then John Emery Jr. is the next one out of his mouth. Ty Davis Price, Ty Davis Price, and then the next one out of his mouth is he's got to make sure he's going to get a comment in that's good for, for John, and so on and so forth. And then there's the times he says something great about a player, but then says something kind of not as not as good, a little bit critical, of the next guy. That gets people's blood pumping. They go freaking out. Why did Coach O say this bad against my son? Why did he... And, you know, we all eat it up, and we go, oh, Coach O ripping on this guy, Coach O. We need to stop the competition between our players that is negative. Keep the competition on the field, but when it becomes a Twitter battlefield, a Facebook battlefield, an Instagram battlefield, where we're going after the, you know, Liam Shanahan sucks, this guy sucks, this guy's horrible, he shouldn't even be a Tiger. I get that you probably don't care if you're posting these types of things. I get that you probably don't have that you know, awareness of being a nice, decent human being anyway, but you've got to realize the parents are seeing this. The parents are caught up in this, in this battle between the fans, but when the coach is, is, is actually, you know, stoking the fire sometimes, the, 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 the parents are caught up in this thing. You know, I've seen the last few weeks, uh, Nikki Trudeau Garrison, John Emery Jr.'s mom, posting that her son did nothing wrong on my post saying free John Emery Jr. And that's another reason why you got to follow LSU Odyssey because all the Tigers and their families are. They're always posting on our stuff. That's where you get these comments where you didn't get some exclusive with John Emery Jr.'s parents saying that from anywhere else. You got it on LSU Odyssey's Twitter feed. And what happened when uh, Nikki Trudeau Garrison just said, hey, my son did nothing wrong? She was met with a bunch of comments by half-witted LSU pretending fans, not even real fans, who were going after John saying, John doesn't deserve this, and John, you don't even know what the hell's going on. Just stop it. And now you're going after John's mom. Like, just shut up. Well, then today, Stacey Evis Price ha having to stick up for her son because there's so many negative comments about her son being posted by people who don't even know what the hell is going on with the game, saying Ty Davis Price is what's wrong with our running game and all this stuff. When I mean, there's games where Corey Kiner had like 12 yards rushing. Okay, there's games where where Ty's had the same. You know, they've both struggled, and it's not because of either running back. It's because of our offensive line. It's quite obvious. Yes, Corey has like 20 more yards. Yes, he has like 1.2 yards more per carry. And yes, he has two touchdowns. Ty doesn't have a touchdown yet. But Corey got a lot of those numbers running against two weak teams, bone tired at the end of the games. Not taking anything away, but my God, you give Ty Davis Price those carries, maybe he has those touchdowns as well. Most likely he has those touchdowns as well. The problem is you're not getting either running back in a rhythm for us to even really truly know who's better. And so while a lot of people are just running their mouths saying this guy's better no matter what, watch the film, okay? Watch the 2020 film and tell me if John Emery Jr. or Ty Davis Price were even given an honest chance to win the running back position, either one of them. Because they were switched out so many times we couldn't even find out. And I'm really getting sick of seeing uh, our guys pinned one against another like this. You know, it's just... It was bad with the quarterbacks, with people talking about Miles, you know. Before Miles got hurt, people loved to talk crap on Miles about how Miles can't be the guy, it's gotta be Max, it's gotta be Max. Max has gotta be the guy, it can't be Miles. Miles was so bad last year, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Even, even though Miles set up 
set LSU records for through his first three LSU starts. But you know he was horrible. And yes, he didn't he did he didn't fulfill his quarterbacking duties like he should. But it's just funny to me that we go from Max is so ho- I mean Miles is so horrible. We got to have Max. We got to have Max. And then Max is starting, and we lose to Auburn. He throws an interception on the last play, and even though he throws for over 300 yards for the fourth out of five games, and suddenly it's, I wish Miles wasn't hurt. I wish Miles wasn't hurt. Max sucks. I wish Miles wasn't hurt. Like, it's just noise. I'm sorry, but sometimes the last people to really understand their team well are the fans. And I know, you know, Are You Serious Sports, some other platforms are never going to say that. They're going to play right into what fans want to hear. But I'm not like that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you how I see it, how I feel it. And right now, I'm I'm not too impressed by what I'm seeing from LSU fans. Going after parents, going after players. I know it sucks to lose to Auburn. I hate losing to Auburn too. But it's just, it's it's it makes things more negative for the people who are really actually having to deal with this stuff on a day-to-day basis. You know, it sucks for us to see our team and our program in such a bad state. But it's a lot worse for the people who are in the program, the players, the young men who are depending on things to to continue and to work, who came to to play for Coach Ed Orgeron, to play for this this program and win championships. And, you know, the media is fueling so much negativity, but the fans are really taking up the flame and carrying it and torching the house on fire. I'm not talking about being anti-Coach O. Coach Ed Orgeron has earned that criticism. And he's, he's, he deserves the criticism. People who don't think that Coach Ed Orgeron deserves the criticism right now and, and think it's unfair, I'm sorry. Uh, but you're wrong. And if this is what you... this If this is an acceptable LSU to you, then go be an Arkansas fan. Because that's that that team's more up your alley. I just I hate to see that type of just negativity and just people going at each other. I understand we lost. It sucks. This is not how this season was supposed to go. But this is the second season in a row where it's completely just dissolved in front of our eyes. And there's reasons why. We can't manage games. You know, four timeouts on dead ball situations. And I think all four were wasted on offense. And that was just during the Auburn game. We had similar situations against Central Michigan, against McNeese, that, you know, those didn't cost us the games, obviously, because they're against McNeese and Central Michigan. But there was an ominous feeling from every time that happened, like, you got to work out these kinks. Got to work out these kinks. Every time they're about to work out these kinks, it just goes right back to square one. What's the common denominator? It's not this coaching staff. A lot of these guys haven't been there. They haven't been there long enough. Well, I'm going to tell you who, who it is. It's Coach Ed Orgeron. Because he's he's admitted it's it's on him. So, okay, we'll take him at his word. It is on him. The buck does stop with him. He's got a championship ring on his finger as an LSU head coach. He knows the pressure. He knows what's expected. And LSU are way below the standards that he set. 
that's the thing. That's the problem when you, with, with, with trying to to top successes when you climb such a high mountain. Trying to get back there again. Trying to stay up there. Going from being the hunter to the hunted is never easy. I mean, just look at Nick Saban. I mean, after 2009, you know, the 2010 and then part of the 2011 season, it looked like Alabama were uh, headed for maybe not one-year wonder type of, not a one-year wonder type of fate, but they were looking like they weren't going to be winning a title for another five years. And then, you know, of course, what happens, the the BCS put them in the title game, even though they didn't deserve it, not over Oklahoma State. But at the same time, can LSU fans really say that after they shut us the hell out? We can't say it. Alabama did deserve to be in that title game because they kicked our ass. And so it's like LSU were in this in this wilderness trying to figure out an identity, trying to trying to understand what's next. And if you've watched our videos the last few days, we've talked a lot about Coach O. We've talked a lot about what he's failing, what he's doing wrong, what what we can change. And we're not going to go to the to the head coach uh, rotation wire yet. We're not going to be talking about who could replace Coach Ed Orgeron just yet because I still feel like there is a chance Coach Ed Orgeron can fix this. I know I am in a, probably a small minority of LSU fans who actually believe that. I've been told his days are numbered, and that's by a great source within the program. But I'm choosing to feel like, hey, you know, Scott Woodward's a reasonable guy. If Coach O can figure this out, we lose only, say, one more game. I think Coach O might stay. Because, you know, unless you really have, like, a great, just perfect solution, which I would love to hear... Who you know? Who's best to come in for 2022 with this type of a signing class? Who all want to play for Coach Ed Orgeron? Who are signing to play for Coach Ed Orgeron? Would would we risk losing Walker Howard to Notre Dame to make to to do that? Would we would we lose? Would we risk losing you know Emory Jones to oust Coach O? Or, you know, is Scott Woodward going to give Coach Ed Orgeron another year and say, hey, is 20, 2022 is going to be the year where we we find out, really. You know, you, you know, 2020 might be your mulligan, and then 2021 is the year we saw it be a real disaster. Now 2022, it's either put up or shut up. I don't know. I don't know if he'll be that patient. I really am just, I'm, it's, it's, I've been told a lot of whispers, a lot of things, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on, there's a lot of wheels moving right now, a lot of names being thrown around by people at the top of LSU's athletic department, they want to, they want to have an answer before they need to, they need, before the question is asked, they want to have an answer. I don't know. I don't. I just don't know. I mean, if you were to tell me Coach Ed Orgeron would be in this position in 2019, I just I would have I would have laughed at you. But here we are. And you know why? It's because LSU. You know, LSU used to be historically a kick you in the ass team. You know, we used to be a team that had absolute vibe of just kick you in the ass. And then we're going to flex over you. And then we're going to teach you 
why you are lesser than us. We may not have always won, but we had a vibe about us. We had an identity. It was a will to win. And I don't know if like inner squad competition, all these like fighting that's going on between, you know, certain people in positions, all the stuff that's going on online, it leaks to into the locker room. I don't know how much all that has affected everything, but we we, we were unable to manage games, can't make tackles. And I know some people are saying, well, Coach Ed Orgeron isn't the one trying to tackle Bo Nix. Yeah, but he's the dude who's who's coaching the people how to tackle him. So, by that token, no coach should ever be fired for any decision they ever make. <laughs> you know, like... Anyway, just a long rant. Go Tigers!